with open arms, but my only welcome was fire and arrows. Nothing in my kingdom is the way it was. Not even me. No more suffering. I can stop this! Stay back!
As our ship lay sinking in the harbor, the prince found himself in a city quite different from the one he left behind. The normally busy wharves were now decimated. Blood-spattered awnings and splintered door frames were all that waited to greet him. And the people, merchants, beggars, fishermen, were nowhere to be found. Others have taken their place. The prince made his way along the torn and blasted district, haunted by visions from his past. The dockside tavern where he'd spent many late nights was now reduced to cinders. Babylon's proud armada, which he would often come to greet, lay cracked and broken, cast to the bottom of the Euphrates. Everywhere there are signs of battle. What of Babylon's guard? Where have they all gone? Should I continue from I will continue my story from here next time. Why is it that every time disaster strikes, I find myself without a proper blade? Still, it's better than nothing. When you have the time, I will continue. Would you like to hear more?
Elena! No! No way into the city now. I will have to climb this siege tower and enter from above. can sense the others who have passed through this place, intent on bringing harm to my family. Four weeks I've been at sea, and every day spent dreaming of my return to Babylon. But never, in all my visions of the future, did I suspect a homecoming such as this. War. It is the only answer. But war with who? And why? Is this where I should restore it? This is a fine place to start the tale next time. You should know that it was not love that drove him, but duty. I was his responsibility. He had made a promise, a promise that was now broken and undone. As with all mistakes he had made, the prince meant to fix this. A noble goal to be certain, but a selfish one as well or he was motivated to ease his own pain. I know these streets. I must keep pace with Kylina if I'm to find the one responsible for this. Thank <laughs> you. 
Where is kind Asha, who would stand before her stall selling fruits and flowers? Or the errant children, making trouble as all young ones do? Gone. All gone.
Where is kind Asha, who would stand before her stall selling fruits and flowers? Or the errant children, making trouble as all young ones do? Gone. All gone. Where is kind Asha, who would stand before her stall selling fruits and flowers? Or the errant children, making trouble as all young ones do? Gone. All gone. Where is kind Asha, who would stand before her stall selling fruits and flowers? Or the errant children, making trouble as all young ones do? Gone. All gone. Continue, I will continue my story from here next time. Home. And yet nothing is as I remember. Objects once familiar and comforting, 
now fill me with uncertainty and dread. What has happened here? I should be resting now, recovering from my time away, or sitting with father. Instead, I'm forced to run and hide, sneaking about like a common thief, hunted in my own city.
Should I continue from here when you return? Good. This is a fine place to start the tale next time. attention to what the prince overheard as he drew close to where I was being kept. Many years ago, I journeyed with the Maharaja of India to the island of time, intending to claim its secrets. What we discovered was a barren, ruined place. This garden had gone to sea. Strange tales adorned its walls, which spoke of an empress. An empress of time. But of this enigmatic creature, there was no trace. We returned to India with treasure nonetheless. A staff, a dagger, an empty hourglass covered in jewels, and books! Such secrets they contained! For even then I was an older man, and knew that my time would soon be at an end. The book... Is this where I shall resume the tale next time? ...showed me that life eternal was not beyond my reach. But it required the essence of the Empress herself. The power of the sands. But you were gone. They were gone. Or so I thought. I turned my attention towards other pursuits and left that dream behind. But then, four weeks ago, the dagger stirred and showed me things. Whispered to me in my sleep. It drew me here, towards Babylon. Alas, the Maharaja did not share my vision, would not grant me leave. So I slew him and claimed his king, his army for my own. Nothing between me and my desire. Recklessly, the prince drew his weapon and charged forward, intending to rescue me. It was as if he had learned nothing from his past adventures. Or perhaps he'd simply forgotten, made blind and deaf by fear and rage.
Father, forgive what I have done, wherever you are. Continue from here when you return. Is this where I should reason I will continue my story from here next time?
Once more the wheels of suffering are set in motion by my hand. In taking Kylina from the island of time, I have changed the course of history. Without the sands of time, I never journeyed to Azad, never killed the Vizier. Now he lives again, driven by the same mad desire. I promise no harm will come to her. Shall I continue my story? Good. This is a fine place to start the tale next time. I am being pushed deeper into the palace, and further from my enemy. My arm! What's happening? What has the Vizier done to me? I don't... Oh! Everything had come full circle. The Prince had resurrected his greatest enemy. Worse, he had accidentally delivered me into the man's hands, unleashing a nightmare plague across Babylon. As if this was not enough, the Prince had nearly been transformed by the Sands himself. Though he had avoided death, he had not escaped. Entirely untouched. Wake up, Prince. Wake up. Wake up. The way behind you is gone, so you will have to find another exit from these sewers. Be quick about it. Start moving. What? Who's there? Be careful. The planks are slick. Mind your balance. seem to like the light. Lead them into the light! Strike while they are blind!
Destroy your enemies. Now use it. What benefit is this? Even as I fight them, I grow weaker. Kill them, and their lives will be yours. I assume this is not permanent. It is, if you want it to be. I do not. But you will. this happening to me? You have been infected by the sands of time, as I am sure you have noticed. Maybe it's the dagger, maybe it's all the time you spent amongst the sands. Or amongst the Empress. Either way, you are resisting it. Mostly. Mostly? You did just transform into something rather unique, so I think the word is quite appropriate. Think of it this way. You have been given a gift. You're stronger, faster. Now, now. That explains the transformation. But who are you? Have you not realized? I am your untapped potential, your unrealized dreams. I am part of you. You're inside me? seems to fight this corruption. 
Why did you hide this from me? What? And ruin all the fun?
Should I continue, I will continue my story from here next time. When the prince was struck by the sands of time, something was woken within. Something strange and cunning. Something dark. <clears throat> the seven years spent on the run had embittered the prince and made him hard. This burden sustained his other half. It was strength. The prince was tempted to do the same, for it was a of darkness. Offering comfort and battle to a man, he had everything. But what were its intentions? Why did it help him? Only time will tell. Is this where I should resume the tale? This is a fine place to start the tale next time. Stories Pay attention. Something's happening down there. Is that? It's the vizier. He's been completely transformed. Interesting. He has used the power of the sands to transform his army, and these artifacts will allow him to transport them across the city with ease. He appears to be in complete control. Things do not look too good for you at the moment. I will not let the Vizier have Babylon! My city! My throne! He has used that beam as a gate. We will follow him through it. Let me know when you have the time to hear more.